yummy. Mmm. I'm not just saying it because it's mine. Okay, this is Teresa and Chickpea Carbonara. Take one. Weak. Okay, let me find the recipe again. This is not your Nona's carbonara. This is my carbonara, and I've taken some of the classic ingredients and swapped them for some less traditional ones, but it's still very delicious. Where is it in here? Found it! <laughs> okay, so here's the chorizo and chickpea carbonara. So, classic Roman dish of guanciale, black pepper, eggs, grated cheese, that's it. My version of it swaps guanciale for Spanish chorizo, which is another cured product, a little smokier, and also adds chickpeas into the mix, and they kind of like sizzle in the fat that's rendered out from the chorizo, and they get like a little bit crisp, and they soak up all the, the juices, and it's just like a, a little added Spanish flair. <laughs> so what you'll need for this recipe is four ounces of chorizo, so there's two types of chorizo in this world. There's Spanish chorizo, that's what this is, and there's Mexican chorizo. Spanish chorizo is dry cured, like it looks like a salami, and then Mexican chorizo is a fresh sausage that is more like an Italian sausage or a breakfast sausage. It's raw meat that you cook and it's crumbly, it's ground meat. This recipe uses the Spanish kind. And so you'll need four ounces of that. You'll need five eggs. Four of them are gonna be yolks, and one of them's gonna be a whole egg. We'll talk about that later. You need a bunch of grated cheese. I'm using parm, parmigiano-reggiano. You can also use pecorino. And then chickpeas, one can. Not the low sodium or sodium free kind because they are whack. Some pasta, rigatoni. I really like a rigatoni. This is a mezze rigatoni. You can really use any kind of pasta you want. Black pepper. That's a huge part of carbonara. And then lemon, which is atypical, but I think pretty necessary in this dish, and I will show you why later on. Bing bang. Number one, we're gonna cut this chorizo. I'm eyeballing what four ounces looks like. Uh, we're gonna cut this chorizo into little like nuggety chunks. This is a fatty, and so I'm gonna cut it into like three planks, and then just cube it up. So Spanish chorizo is made with smoked paprika, among other spices, garlic, onion, powder, things like that. But it's like decidedly smoky. It's a different flavor profile than guanciale is. So it's gonna give this whole dish a little bit of a smoky kind of Spanish flavor, but. The next thing that we need to do is make our egg and cheese mixture. So. So carbonara, the sauce is enriched and thickened with egg yolks. That's what gives it that like really bright, yellow, unctuous, like fatty, clingy vibe. And so I'm using in this recipe four egg yolks and then one whole egg. And the whole egg is just there to give like a little bit of lightness and levity to the dish because it can get pretty heavy and rich. And so I like to have one egg white in there with the other four egg yolks. Everybody kind of does this differently. Like your Italian grandmother might say like, it needs eight egg yolks or whatever, but my recipe uses four yolks, one whole. Okay, so we're, we're cracking the yolks and the white, <laughs> and we're adding in about two ounces of parm. It's a lot of parm, not gonna lie. I'm not measuring it, but you are basically turning this into an eggy cheese paste and this is gonna get whisked into the hot pasta after it's cooked. Look at that, eggy cheese paste. And it's going to cook with the residual heat from the pan once it hits the pasta, but we'll do that later. Okay, so there's our eggy cheese paste. And then the last thing we need to do is just drain our chickpeas. Can you chat if I didn't like my outfit? It feels very Italian. I don't know if we go that far, but. Well, like, I feel like a red sauce joint is like red, is like red and white checker is like their red. And so I was kind of trying to get into the spirit of that. What we got here? You're leaving? Oh. Is this <laughs> Spanish oh my God. chorizo, I see. Yeah, do you want one? Yeah, I got one. Go on. I don't know if Deco would really like this dish, honestly. I feel like he's more into a classic, but. Deco once referred to pasta as a boiled starch to me. Yeah, but weirdly, Deco's gotten into pasta yeah, lately, yeah. which is 
so old. hypocritical. Cause I'm blue. Yeah, I you Yeah, it's true. Um, okay, so I'm seasoning the pasta water. You know the drill. Okay, so we're gonna start by sizzling out the chorizo and then frying the chickpeas in the chorizo oil. Couple tablespoons of olive oil in here in the Dutch oven, and I'm adding all of the cubed chorizo, and I'm going to sizzle it out in the oil. It's gonna get crisp, which is really nice because it's rendering out some of its fat, and then all of that flavor is gonna be left behind in the oil, and then that's what the chickpeas are gonna cook in. Why do you choose to use a sort of rigatoni style? We'll also tell you that there's like certain pasta shapes that like cling the sauce clings to better. I've said it so many times, I've done that thing. No, sauce clings to all pasta, like it's just not a thing. What about the petite? What about penne? There's, right. Penne fucking sucks. There are certain pastas that are just like naturally better for sauce yeah, penne, clingage. Penne sucks, but this. No. <laughs> this. Big difference. <laughs> Essentially a chopped penne. That's a yeah, but the problem with penne is that it's cut on the bias. It's just heinous. Like, that cut is just like so heinous to me. That oblique cut. So smart, Molly. You're so smart. Most food people like to be like, and I chose this pasta shape because like it's perfect for the blank. Like the tomatoes, the ragu like clings or like, or I can't say like things get stuck in it. And it's just like, no, like any pasta really will work. And actually like a fuzili is probably just the best pasta shape in the world because everything's getting stuck in the nooks and crannies and the fuzili and all of the other ones are frankly just like lesser. Amen. But I also happen to like a rigatoni, a messy rigatoni, which is what we're using here today. Back to the carbonara. So we've got some crispy little bits in here. Do you guys want to see how crispy my bits are? Look how crispy my bits are. Oh my God, this is so crispy. My bits be crispy. Oh. Like that looks good. Taking the crispy bits out and I'm leaving all of their yummy oil behind because that is where the flavor is and that is what the chickpeas are gonna cook in. So set this aside and add the chickpeas. Great sizzle. So we're just gonna let these fry and crisp in here. I'm gonna season them with a little bit of salt and they're gonna just basically soak up all of the chorizo oil. And that's gonna make them infinitely more delicious than they were when they just came out of the can a second ago. In the meantime, this is a great time to drop your pasta because there's really not that much left to do in this recipe. We already made our cheesy egg mixture paste. We've crisped up our chorizo. We're now onto the chickpeas and the rest of it is really just assembly and bringing it all together and making it all softy and glossy. So I'm just dropping my pasta. Hi, Wicked Tunnels. Hi, baby. This is the moment now where we can add black pepper in to the chickpeas and it will bloom in the oil. I think a lot of people think that pepper just like tastes like pepper, but actually there's a lot of nuance to the flavor of pepper and different, there's different kinds of peppercorns and they, it also tastes differently depending on how you use it. So if you just grind it freshly versus having it be pre-ground versus having it toasted in fat, those are all like different expressions of pepper. These are nice and peppery, yum. Mm. And we've soaked up all the fat. I'm gonna turn off the heat. We're just waiting on the pasta now. But what we can do in the meantime is temper our eggs. So that means taking our cheesy eggy paste and adding like a half a cup or so of hot water to it from the pasta water and then whisking that in, loosening this mixture up so that it doesn't go into shock when it hits the hot pasta and the hot Dutch oven. I have a question about the pasta. Oh, okay. Is every pasta supposed to be al dente? Okay, are you ready for my al dente rant now? Yeah. <laughs> I think that we as a culture have overdone it a bit on al dente and that like people are so scared of overcooking their pasta because all of us chefs are like al dente, al dente, al dente that now people pull their pasta far too soon and it's like no, that's just undercooked. So I recently have been like, just like inching towards fully cooked pasta. And I have to say like, I, I feel really good about it. So I'm not gonna undercook this pasta and I'm gonna bite into one and you might not see a white ring in the middle of it. And I just want everyone to know that that is a-okay. They're perfectly cooked through. I love that response. That's a great thought, Molly. <laughs> Okay, we're adding all of the cooked pasta to the chickpeas. 
And I'm reserving this pasta water because I'm going to use it in a sec. Also, question about pasta water. Yeah. In tomato-based pastas, you don't say pasta water, right? They're generally a tomato sauce is like loose enough that you don't really need it. But whereas like this is a pretty thick, cheesy sauce, yeah. and so you need the water to to thin it out. But I've definitely added pasta water to my tomato sauces. It's like you kind of have to decide for yourself. All right, so we are reserving our pasta water because we're going to use it in a second. We have our cheesy paste over here. We're turning this on to very low heat, and we're going to drizzle this in. And, and we're gonna do it little by little, and we're gonna work it, whoops, work it vigorously. I'm adding a little bit of pasta water here to kind of slow it down, to loosen it up. And then a little more. And you're basically emulsifying the egg into the hot pasta water and the fat in the skillet. And as it starts to really thicken up, or if you feel like, if you're like, ah, my eggs are scrambling, just add a splash of pasta water and slow it down a little. It helps to loosen things up and it makes it less stressful. And then just a dance of pasta water and cheesy paste, and pasta water and cheesy paste, until it feels really thick and saucy and glossy and well-coated. And then adding the chorizo back in. And stirring that in. It's looking real emulsified. And then we're gonna taste for seasoning. It's off the heat now. I don't think it needs any seasoning, except for a little bit of lemon zest. And that's because chorizo can be like pretty deep and a earthy kind of like dark flavor, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so yeah. lemon zest really helps to brighten it up. You don't need to put lemon juice, but just a little zest to brighten it up because there's a lot of fatty shit going on in there. Mmm. Mmm. That's how you make a chorizo and chickpea carbonara. It was so easy, don't you think? Look at how beautiful this sauce is in here. Nothing's ever been more. Oh, <laughs> product placement. This is the perfect thing to drink with a bottle of. Drink this wine. Okay, that's one bowl. Mmm, that textural chorizo. Mmm, it's that good black pepper. That's a really silly glass. Mm. That's disgusting. What is your deal with goat cheese? Yeah, seriously. It tastes like a goat's butt. It's in the barn. I like a shrimp's butthole, <laughs> but not a goat's butthole. <laughs>